from WordPress.com, an article by Yakov Applebaum, December 3rd, 2020, The Georgia Ballot Underground Railroad. The following composites should help understand the context of the CCTV footage from the November 3rd election count in Fulton County, Georgia. The video shows a four camera field of view of suite 604, the ballot processing room at the State Farm Arena at 10, 58 and five seconds p.m. As the crew was finishing cleaning up at the end of the day, one of the supervisors, Ralph Jones, a bald man in a red shirt, received several calls on his cell phone. Shortly after his second call, the footage shows him and another woman with black hair and blonde braids, Shea Moss, removing four rolling transport ballot boxes from under a black cloth covered table at the center of the room. At 11.02 and 52 seconds p.m., they distribute the ballot trays from the boxes between four work stations, the special count task force that consists of five individuals then starts feeding the ballots to the four scanners. The counting continued for close to two hours and ended at about 12.58 a.m. The footage shows multiple evidence that the special count session was pre-planned and carefully timed. It's also clear that in the 116-minute period, the team sprinted through the ballot scanning process to meet some sort of a deadline. Image one, a composite of four CCTV field of views of the ballot counting room in suite 604. The location of the table under which the four ballot storage boxes were kept and several key events that took place prior to the special ballot count. People and activity. At 11.02 p.m., when the four ballot storage boxes were taken out, there were seven individuals in the room. The state of the tables in the room shows that only four out of the 24 were in use and that there was no visible ballot counting activity beyond the four designated tables. At 11.04 p.m., two additional individuals left for the night, POI-6 and POI-7. POI stands for Person of Interest. The only ballots counted during this window were the ones taken from under the table in the middle of the room. Also of note is that the ballots that came from under the table seem to have been pre-processed and had already been extracted from their envelopes. Image two, typical US Postal Service MM trays used to hold ballots. Each of the four rolling transport ballot boxes contained about 6,000 ballots, three trays, each holding between 1,000 and 2,000 ballots. Here is a diagram. We have Ralph Jones, the man in the red shirt, Shea Moss, the woman with the blonde braids, Ruby Freeman, the woman in the purple skirt, Ralph Jones, the registration chief at Fulton County Government and the floor supervisor during the ballot count, consulting with his crack team. The A-team, Ruby Moss, the daughter of Shea Moss, and the floor supervisor, Ralph Jones, the registration chief at Fulton County Government and a man with a history of extremely poor moral judgment, which we'll take a look at later. Leaky pipes and the official stop time. With respect to the timeline, the termination of the counting activity in the room and the presence of the skeleton staff 
didn't correlate to the alleged leaking water pipe, Rob Pitts told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that the pipe burst at 6.07 a.m. and was repaired within two hours around 8 a.m. From this timeline, it's unlikely that the leaking pipe had anything to do with the evacuation of staff and observers that took place almost 15 hours later. Of note is that the alleged burst pipe wasn't even mentioned by county officials during the 10 a.m. press conference. It is also clear from the late special counting session that the staff and supervisors didn't comply with their own work plan and official procedure to stop scanning absentee ballots at 10.30 p.m. and start again in the morning. Estimate of the number of processed ballots during the special count. It's hard to calculate the exact number of ballots that came from the rolling boxes, but a rough range estimate that is based on four boxes, approximately 3,000 ballots per box, the scanner speed and throughput, 3,000 ballots per hour, and the user motion associated with feeding the scanner yields a range of 12,000 to 24,000 ballots. Obviously, without the proper controls like duplicate and unique ID detection and supervision, these ballots could have also been scanned multiple times. They were at Ruby Freeman's station. Image four, the identity and relationship confirmation for two persons seen in the CCTV footage in suite 604. Both took part in the removal of the four rolling transport ballot boxes and the resumption of the ballot count. The two individuals are Ruby Freeman, an election worker and a Democratic activist, and her daughter, Shay Moss, who was a team election supervisor. Image five, Ruby Freeman pimping her and Ralph Jones's boss, Rob Pitts, and his motor voter bus project, quote, Fulton County is the first one to have a mobile bus, Pitts, beside being a leaking pipes aficionado, is also a strong promoter of social distancing and wearing a mask. That is, as long as the cameras are rolling. I heard a lot of questions and answers about this event over the last two days, the last few days, but the obvious who, what, why, how questions that I haven't heard from the Clouseau-style investigators who are combing the ground for or against evidence of fraud are, one, who was Ralph Jones talking to on his cell phone? A hint. It was a political call. Two, what other work-related phone calls and texts came in and out of the room? Three, what triggered the special midnight count and who authorized Ralph Jones to restart it? Four, why did the count stop at 10.30 p.m. and resume 30 minutes later after all but five of the workers left? Five. What was the net gain loss for each candidate from this late night ballot count? Politics aside, if we get the answers to these questions, we will be able to easily confirm or deny most voting fraud claims. If we don't, this event will enter the history books as the defining event of the 2020 elections.